Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming at the end of KubeCon. It's been a long KubeCon for me. I'm sure it's been a long KubeCon for you all. Uh, bear with me a little bit. I'm losing my voice here, but should be able to get through this. Uh, welcome to the SIG Kate Sim for updates. Uh, we'll be talking about what's been going on in the Kate Sim for SIG and where we're going. My name is Benjamin Elder. I'm a software engineer at Google. This is Mohammed Wali, uh, SRE at Cisco. And we are leads in the SIG. So Mohammed is a SIG KSM for tech lead and a native maintainer. Or is it K-native now? K-native. Yeah. K-native. Um, and I'm on the Kubernetes steering committee. Uh, I'm a SIG KSM for SIG testing tech lead and a maintainer of kind. So what is SIG Kate's Infra? SIG Kate's Infra manages the Kubernetes project's own infrastructure. Uh, that includes the registry we serve the container images, Prow, which is our CI system. We'll talk more about that later. DL.Kate's.io that serves binaries and all of the expansive CI CD infrastructure that we use um, for running E2E tests and all of the things to make sure that the Kubernetes project is reliable. So what are our priorities this year? We're migrating everything left that is running in some company's account to accounts in the Kubernetes project. We've been working on this for a long time since the beginning of the SIG, and we've had one bump after another. We're confident this year, the last lingering things, by the end of the year, everything will be an account that is owned by the CNCF and SIG Kate Simfra together with continuity through the project and where anybody can show up and participate. We're going to adopt Okta SSO to make it easier to onboard people into participating. Uh, we've had some infrastructure that for GCP because that's the first vendor we had for managing access. We're going to do multi-vendor access and make sure that contributors want to contribute, we can get them quickly onboarded. We're going to improve our observability stack so people can see what's going on with the infra. We're going to do some cost optimization and we're going to migrate from GCR to AR the rest of the way. Um, ahead of that deprecation. I want to take a moment to thank all the vendors who've been sponsoring us, uh, Google Cloud and Amazon, who are providing $3 million a year each in cloud credits, Fastly, who's providing a huge amount of bandwidth for us, uh, Equinix and DigitalOcean, who are providing resources that we use for testing as well, and more soon that you'll hear about later. So I said we complete the migration in the community. Uh, that includes the CI. There's been a huge effort to move the CI, but it's not quite all migrated yet. So for real this time, we're going to finish this year. Um, and we're going to move the test triage pipeline that goes with CI, because those are a couple, and the release bucket. And I'm going to talk some more about these. So this is our CI. Uh, it happened on accident. We had a Jenkins, and then we added some extensions, and then we thought, why don't we run things on Kubernetes because we're just running containers anyhow. And next thing you know, SIG testing has a CI tool. Kate Semver provides the resources used to run the CI tool. That is at proud.case.io or the Kubernetes slash test info repo. As you can see, we run a lot. Um, up at the top here, that is a flame graph of the time to complete and the uh, success or failure state of the jobs um, over the past day. Uh, we run tens of thousands of CI jobs daily. So we put out an announcement earlier this year, action required. The default cluster that we schedule workloads to is a cluster inside a google.com GCP project, as in Google's GCP accounts. Um, we still have things tangled up in that. We have been migrating them to run on Kubernetes clusters run by the Kubernetes project. We are going to finish that by August. All jobs must be migrated or they will be removed. We've made a huge effort and many of them are moved already. And when that's done, we'll be able to look at migrating the control plane and we're starting to plan that out. A shout out to Ricky. Are you here in the audience? No, Ricky couldn't make it today. Ricky has been doing a massive amount of effort to coordinate migrating CI jobs to the community infrastructure, and we're getting really close. So we also have this test triage pipeline. Basically, we collect all the logs from our tests, 
We get all the errors, we put them into BigQuery. And then from that BigQuery pipeline, that's Kettle, the first part, we have this tool brilliantly named triage. Um, it actually does KNN clustering after doing some normalization on the logs to find these are common failure modes that are happening across tests. So we can track that something has become flaky in Kubernetes. Something has started to break. If we just looked at one job, we might not notice, but we'll see trends where some failure mode has started to increase. This tool is used by some of our um, most prolific contributors to find where Kubernetes has uh, regressed and solved these things. This is still running inside Google. Um, it's a pipeline that was pieced together over the years and meant to be temporary. So of course we've been using it for like a decade now. Um, and <laughs> we'll need to finish migrating it. Uh, it's running inside Google. So I'm gonna be taking a look at this and uh, the only known instance as opposed to our CI, which other projects also use, um, we'll be looking at how do we move this out um, as part of migrating the CI. The release bucket. So we previously announced that DL.case.io was powered by Fastly. That's true, and we're very thankful for that. But it's still backed by the Kubernetes release uh, GCS bucket, which is in the Google containers, google.com GCP project. A um, little bit of Kubernetes trivia. Google containers is actually the placeholder name for Kubernetes before it was Kubernetes. That was the IRC channel on Freenode, and it's the GCP project in which literally all of the infrastructure was. We're still depending on that. Um, and there's a few other miscellaneous things in there. So we've been working to flip that over. The other thing that has happened here is uh, because we've been using this particular GCS bucket for years, there are a whole lot of places out there that are just using the bucket directly because it's public read behind the redirect. So this time we're gonna be publishing to a bucket shielded by the CDN that's not public read so we can guarantee that we're not getting um, ridiculous amounts of non-efficient traffic. You have a bucket in a single region and you get people fetching it from the other side of the planet. It's really expensive. We don't want that. Um, so we've been working on making sure we can smoothly flip this over without uh, busting the cache and um, to a, a bucket that's controlled by the community. And we've been partnering with Fastly to um, plan that out. It's not too complicated, but it's one of those things where people need enough time to finish the work. So now I'm gonna hand off to Mohammed to talk about some of the other things that we're doing this year. Hi there, I'm Mohammed. So as Ben said, I work at Secrets Info Lead. Um, I also work at Cisco as an SRE. Um, so cost optimizations. Um, so last year, as you might have heard, and towards the end of the previous year, we kind of ran out of money and had to scramble some credits. Um, so we did some cost optimization last year and we're still planning on doing more this year. So for example, we use Google Cloud. Google Cloud offers you flexible CUDs if you commit to use X amount of dollars a year. So we have a base amount of CI that we run every day. Um, so we have bought a commit for that. So we're saving some money there. Um, we want to explore the same thing for AWS. So on AWS, we also have a fixed amount of base CI every day that we run. So we're seeing what we can do with reserved instances and et cetera, et cetera. Um, we also look at our cost every month and see what we can optimize if we're doing something inefficient that needs to change. Um, Etcd. Um, so last year, or the end of the year before, um, Etcd joined Kubernetes as SIG Etcd. Um, Etcd is very critical to Kubernetes, um, but they also run some infrastructure that we're trying to take over and manage on their behalf. Um, one of the things that SCD is looking for that we can help with as a, as a Kubernetes project, for example, is better visualization of the tests. Um, so they are leveraging test grid. They've got some more CI that they're planning on running. So we're going to help them out with that. Let's see. So Okta SSO. Um, as you've seen in the diagram in, in the picture earlier, we've got access to a lot of services from different vendors, um, including some that are not on our screen. Um, these are enterprise products that use enterprise identity that we're very familiar with at work. So Okta was grateful enough to give us access to their IDP so we could onboard contributors. So we can allow them to onboard and offboard these services uh, very easily with minimal work. Um, so we've deployed this. Um, there are a couple of services accessible on there. We, I need to add additional services on there and then start rolling this out to the wider Kubernetes community. Um, there's a couple of systems on there that I'm planning on working with other stakeholders to enable that feature. 
um, our monitoring stack. Um, so we've got a couple of Grafana instances that are monitoring different things. Um, so we have a really old one that's tracking Prow, uh, still lives inside Google, so we need to fix that. Recently, though, um, if you're at the Contributor Summit, uh, we showcased a new Grafana instances that are visualizing how our jobs are performing. Um, I've got some screenshots. Um, those were kind of important for us as we're looking to right size jobs, so they're very efficient. Um, you're not requesting 10 cores when you only need two. Um, so there's a couple of pictures here. Um, so right there, you can see um, at that URL, if you go there, you can see jobs that are scheduled to run for a particular repository, how, how often they run, how many concurrently. And then over here, you can see their CPU and usage um, of these jobs, right? Um, so if the job ain't quite sized right, uh, we can go and amend that. Um, this information is also very helpful as part of the CI migration that we've been working on, because people are moving jobs. Many of these jobs initially didn't even set resource limits and requests, so it was a fun challenge to work through. Um, let me see. Monitoring distracted here. Oh, and here's the, um, the legacy one. Um, if you look at the Grafana UI, it's uh, a bit old. But it tracks the usage of Boscos. Um, Boscos is a, pro a software that we wrote. It allows us to lease projects for Google Cloud projects for CI. So you can lease a Google Cloud project, you run some CI in there, and then you lend it, you return it, and then we clean it up, and then another job can borrow it. Um, but we have some improvements planned. So those are three different Grafana instances. We want to unify them um, and make sure that it's up to date and it's patched all the time. Uh, we also need to gather metrics from some clusters that, are, that we are currently not monitoring today. Um, and the other thing is we need to make sure those metrics are persistent for a few months so they can survive cluster restarts and stuff. And we can see job usage and cluster health over a period of three to six months. Um, GCR to AR migration. Um, so if you are a Google Cloud customer, you might have heard that GCR is deprecated. That happened a few years ago. But the deprecation is for real, as in they're going to get rid of it in a year's time. So we need to move to Artifact Registry. In 2023, we adopted Artifact Registry for our production registry. So if you're pulling images from registry.case.io, that's what happens today. However, there is a part of the puzzle. So when we build container images, we stage them somewhere first, and then we copy them over to production once we're ready to release a specific build. That staging happens in GCR, and that needs to be fixed within 12 months. Um, ideally, we want to do this before the end of the year, um, but it's some engineering work, so we've got to work out. So we need to work out how we're going to do that. Um, so, as you heard this morning, Oracle has given us some credits at last KubeCon in Chicago. So, we're trying to set that tenant up. Um, primarily, we want to do some ARM64 testing. Um, we have a lot of jobs that don't really care about the architecture. For example, we check out repository, we run unit tests, right? They could run on any architecture. And ARM64, as you might have heard, um, might be cheaper for some workloads compared to AMD64 for specific workloads. So we're going to try that. Um, we also have some jobs that actually want to run EDE tests on ARM hardware. So etcd is one of them. So we need to enable that functionality. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of work to do. Um, there are many things on fire, and we need a lot, we need some maintainers to turn up. I'm very interested in hearing from SREs like myself who work elsewhere and have worked on fun challenges. Um, let me see. So that's where you can find us. So if you're not on the community Slack, you can go to slack.kates.io to join. Uh, we are in the Sickis Infra channel. We also have a GitHub repository where you can see our charter and the projects and things and systems that we are responsible for. Uh, we also have a repository. I forgot to add it onto the dash onto the slide, but we have a repository called Kates.io in the Kubernetes org that you can come and take a look at. There's some hundred odd issues that we need some help with. Um, and we also meet every other week um, at these times on Wednesday, uh, 9 p.m. London time, 1 p.m. Pacific time, 10 in Europe. And yeah, thank you. Uh, do you have any questions? Yeah, someone's coming with the mic.
No question. I said capable of the good work. Yeah, thank you so much. Hello. Thank you for the excellent presentation. Um, you mentioned that you have a backlog of some issues that you would love to have people work on. Uh, can you elaborate a little more on what you think are the areas, just generally, that it would be great to have more attention towards, or people from which skill sets or which interest areas? Uh, you can go first now. Uh, okay. So we have things where we need people who are going to have some expertise in actually running cloud infrastructure, and we have things where we have engineering challenges where we need to have some custom software, and we maybe need to make some patches to make it easier to move it around. Um, we also just have a bunch of places where our CI system, we have job configurations, maybe no one's on hand that's an expert, but take a look at it and um, we have people that will help you figure out the patterns to migrate it, but we have some very mechanical work to do and then just following up and see like, did it break? Okay, it broke. We need to roll that back and reach out to the owners and sort some more, but we're taking a first pass that can we just mechanically move it over. Um, and so those don't even need any particular special skills, just time. Um, there's a lot of things like that. Uh, I'll give one simple example. So Kubernetes came out almost 10 years ago. Um, some six years ago that Kates.io repository was around. And we have some infrastructure that was deployed using bash scripts. Um, it's really awkward to use that today. Um, but we, at the same time, though, we have infrastructure that we deployed in the last few years using Terraform, but I need someone to come along and rewrite that bash in Terraform and merge it with the rest of the modern Terraform code that we have. Uh, that's just one simple example, and there's a bunch of others that you'll see. Um, I think we have an umbrella issue somewhere tracking all our infrastructure technical debt. So, yeah, if you're like me and you do SRE and DevOps at work, I'm very interested in hearing from you. Um, as mentioned earlier, the Kates.io repo has a long backlog and it's, there's a pretty wide variety. Well then, thanks for coming. Safe travels. Thank you so much.